it's Thursday and today we are going to be doing pattern roulette again. You guys just seemed to really enjoy it last time and I really enjoyed it as well so I thought why not. So if you would like to have a go at this for yourself I have made the two wheels that I use publicly available I think. I have listed them in the description down below. Have at it. <laughs> just make sure if you do that you share the creations with me. Discord's probably the easiest place but I would just love to see some of the things that you've come up with. <laughs> okay so we're just going to spin the wheels. So here is mashup number one. To start with, we have the body of the lobster, which I'm going to take all the way down to the tip of the tail, I think. So from about here downwards. The head of the Loch Ness Monster. So it's going to be an interesting construction challenge given that this is all made in one piece. The arms of the chicken and the legs of the red rainbow panda. So I technically use the front legs as back legs for some of the poses. So I, I guess I have some options there. The arms of the chicken are going to be these little like wings so that's going to be interesting <laughs> then we have the tail of franken kitten and the ears of the ankylosaurus now he doesn't have ears so i guess that's a i guess it's a freebie <laughs> for this first one and finally the special detail from the owl bear which i think i'm going to try and do the fluffy texture that's all over him i guess i could do just the fuzzy eyebrows but i think the, the feathery texture all over him could be just like a really interesting detail that might help tie all of these pieces together. Now I don't know, I don't really know how this one's going to go because I think the lobster body is going to be really hard to recover from. Hopefully with all the pieces made it'll start to make a little bit more visual sense because right now I can't really see how this is going to become anything. I picked my yarn going with a blue purple colour scheme. The lobster body is formed in two pieces, so I made some adjustments to turn it into one piece. That did involve working the body rows in reverse, which you can do just by swapping any increases for decreases and vice versa. And then rather than try and make the head all the same piece with the body, I just made it as a separate piece. After pinning the head and body together, I whipped up the wings, the legs, and the tail. I should also say that I made the whole head and half the body in the back loop only, so that I would be able to add the chain loop detail stitching that I've selected as my special detail from the owlbear. There we go, add a little fluff. They kind of naturally formed a top and bottom jaw out of the head and the chest, so I kind of just rolled with it. And I wish I hadn't in hindsight, but it was still good to experiment with that kind of structure. I think it's got applications for me in future. So as I was adding his ruffly feathers, it occurred to me that those wings didn't have to be wings. So I ended up moving things around a little bit, and what was originally intended to be the tail, I made it again in pink, and it became the tongue. <laughs> The wings from the chicken became fins for the tail and the back legs became front arms to give him an almost monster seal type of vibe. I was really trying here. And then I tried to use some turkey stitching to add loops to the rest of the tail just to try and tie it all in together. So then it was just a matter of sewing all those pieces together. So uh, there's our first one. I think I get one pass. And I think this guy is it. Yeah, okay, so he is not my favorite, but we still like him. Nom 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 nom. He's just one or two odd choices away from being good, and that's really annoying. Uh, I we will do better. We will do better on the next one. So spinning the wheel again, and there is our second mashup. Okay, so for mashup number two, we have the body of Scullicorn, which is like this little peanut underneath all of this. So that's a good start. Then we had the head of the Death's Head Hawk Moth. Oh, a little bug puppy. Hey bud, it's been a while. Uh, so just his little head. The tail of the gorilla, 
Which sounds well and good, right? Because gorillas have tails until you turn my gorilla around and realize I never gave him one. I, but I will I will find a way to work that in because we've already used our freebie for the day. So we'll, we'll give him a, a gorilla-esque tail. We have ears from the squirrel, which are good little ears. They've got a lot of like dimension to them. So like I'm pretty happy with that. Legs from the bear, couple of bear legs. Arms, arms from the ghost. And the special detail from the T-Rex, which has to be the puff stitching that was worked down his back. Maybe I can use the puff stitches to form a gorilla tail as well, just so that I'm not, you know, cheating. So there's a lot of spooky ingredients in this particular one. So Death's Head Hawk Moth sounds spooky, but this little guy is so cute that honestly, this mashup's already off to a really strong start. So it's been paired with the body of the Skullicorn, which again, sounds spooky, but is actually just a little peanut shape which pairs really nicely with the cute little dome-shaped head that I have on the Hawk Moth. So I'm actually, I'm feeling very positive about this whole thing. I'm determined to make this the sweetest little gumdrop of a creature, in spite of all of the spookiness that we're mixing into him. Alrighty, we gotta pick some colours. I'm going with my favourite soft, juicy pastels this time around. So I started by making the head. I did leave the head unfinished, just in case I had to make adjustments to it to make it fit the body. And then the squirrel ears, which I had to make several times because I kept putting the colours on the wrong sides. Next up were the arms for the spooky ghost, and I went for a two-toned look to give him paws. Then it was time for some sassy bear legs. The front legs and the back legs of the bear were the exact same pattern, so we just made a couple of those. <laughs> he looks like he's floating in the bath. Now, I left the body piece to last, because I knew it had to incorporate our special detail of puff stitches down the back. Spacing those relatively even felt like it was going to be a lot harder than it actually was. I also had to resolve the gorilla tail issue. Anywho, it turns out when you combine a T-Rex, a Skullicorn and a gorilla, you get this. Then it was just a matter of assembling all the pieces. Excuse me, sir, who gave you the right, the audacity to be this adorable? I mean, look at the little puff stitching down his back. He's so cute. And I don't know if that's reading through the camera so much. It's just like in person, he's just this little like, done. So apparently every ounce of cuteness and adorability and loveliness was wrung out of this thing. <laughs> and given to this guy instead. So he got a double dose and this guy's here just, just, just doing his best, aren't you buddy? So I guess we should move on to mashup number three. Okay, so mashup number three. So we are missing a couple of creatures from this latest mashup and I'm sorry about that, but that's why there is going to be a photo instead of the physical thing here. So we have the body of the love bug, we have the arms of the pumpkin spider, and we have the head of the fox, and I at least know where that one is. He's not here because I sold him. So that's kind of like the base of our creature. The tail of the axolotl, and I'm going to include the fin as part of that. The legs from the bunny, and I'm going to include the haunch as well as the feet as part of, as part of that definition. The ears from the triceratops. She doesn't have ears, but I'm going to say that those two pu top puff stitches are her ears. And the special detail from the pufferfish. So I could go with the indented mouth, but instead I think I'm going to go for the little wobbly texture he has, because I think it could be a cool textural element to incorporate into this latest mashup. Now I am very concerned about the heavy spider vibe this group of creatures has already. Both the arms and the body are from what is essentially the same spider. So I don't want it to have a spider vibe at the end. I will just have to see how we go. So I had all of the pieces, but I wasn't really sure how to put them together. I started by adding the outline detail to the love bug body, honestly just to buy time to think. I decided to go for an upright kangaroo type pose. Now because I had lost a game of yarn chicken, I didn't have any dark green left and had to assemble using the pale green and well, I had to show this. A rare opportunity to appreciate how rough and uneven my sewing really is. This, this is why you should use matching yarn when sewing on your pieces. With the tail attached, I could now add on the fin. I only had to frog once to get it to line up straight, so <laughs> win. The 
And then it was just a matter of sewing on the rest of the pieces. And this is what it turned out as. It's kind of a chubby spaghetti ratfish. Why does that make so much sense to me? So there are our three new mashups. We have the monster seal, the candy gremlin, and the spaghetti ratfish. Let me know in the comments which one is your favorite. Okay, so I definitely like one of them more than the others. <laughs> that said, they are all part of our pattern roulette family. Let me know which one's your favorite as well, because like for me, there is a clear, there is a clear winner, but for you guys, it might be a different one. But that is it for this week. So bye. Oh, we need a thumbnail. Put the jacket back on. Let's get the scissors. Who's getting chopped up for the thumbnail this time? Ha ha ha. You okay, bud? I promise he's fine.